I checked out. Welcome to the one within all to another episode of Interverse, a podcast about unlocking your unique creative potential by melding minds with some of the most powerful mentors we can find. I'm your host, Chance Garten, and I'm very excited to be serving up another delicious mental mashup of metaphysical philosophies and empowering epiphanies with our guest for episode 113, Josefa Savu. Josefa is an Australian bloke with an intensely burning passion for lighting up the lives of others by leading the way with innovative spiritual techniques and knowledge of advanced awarenesses held by our ancient ancestors. Creating your ideal life with the help of crystals, energetic cleansing, and maintaining astral hygiene, and how to conjure and control creative energy are just a few of the offerings on the Interverse altar for today. And I expect the infotainment you intake here will be applicable to your own life should you decide to experiment. Find Josefa at journeywithjosefa.com and on YouTube. That's J-O-S-E-F-A. And you'll also find links to both of those places in the show notes. Check out some very informative videos about a few of the aforementioned topics on his channels. I'm very excited to be having this conversation with Josefa because he's been on my radar for almost two years now, and we've stayed in touch with one another's work, but never connected for a full episode till today. I believe that, you know, divine timing is always in order, so this is definitely the perfect time and place to strike. I think we first came in contact, though, way back when through the website Secret Energy, which is a great knowledge and networking resource for anyone on a journey of self-discovery and improved wellness. And I used to talk about it quite a bit. I uh, haven't maybe for a while, but not because I don't still love it. And I think we'll get into very many of the topics that you can find on Secret Energy that, as well in this episode. Hopefully, we just create a diving board for you guys to jump right into the deep end of metaphysical studies because it can really accelerate your life development to uh, light speed. <laughs> anyway, with introductions finished up let's now mentally enter a space of enhanced intentional awareness by shifting our perspectives inward momentarily take this present moment to try and sense the core of bioenergetic heat and tingliness within you and when we feel connected to that ask yourself what you're most grateful for right now and that naturally arising feeling of goodness that stirs up when you think about this gratitude is a very powerful force and if enough of you link up with me right now and send that over to Josefa as a big ball of welcoming love energy, I bet we can make him feel all tingly. Thanks for coming on the show, man. It's great to be finally doing this. Yes, thank you so much. That was an amazing intro and uh, I'm feeling it already, guys. I'm grateful for this present moment and to be connected two years in the making, brother. Here we are. Yeah, wow. I don't even know where to start. There's so many things that we could be talking about that you get into on your channel that have helped me out personally on my path. But I think let's just start with the shiny stuff. Let's talk about crystals. Maybe what would you give as your best pitch to try and convince a skeptic that crystals are effective? Okay, great question, my brother. And definitely let's start there. So crystals are actually something I wanted to say this first, that I, I was blessed to be working in a space around crystals for a few years. Um, it's been you know maybe two years since I've been in that space, but crystals work and operate on this en uh, essence of resonance. As we come into the knowing of realizing how much things affect you, how much we, you know, how much we are connected to all the different aspects of energy in our in our fields, be it sound, light, smell, all these different things that do affect you, we realize that we need to have resonators in our life that are actually holding the frequency that we want to emit. Now, we live in a third dimensional reality, which means we are in the slowed down matter. So what crystals are, because they're a very hard form of geometric patterns, they hold a resonance. So by very by the fact of you holding these these crystals or these different stones, they all have their own different geometries, their own their own different patterns. 
and also their own frequencies, what we can do is we can use them as resonators to kind of attune to the energy that we want to move towards. But I do say this as a disclaimer. It's not as if you pick up one quartz and then you're, you know, you're, you're, you're enlightened or you're, you're cured of all ailments. I like to explain it the same way that Jim Rohn, a very famous personal development teacher, says, you're the average of the five people you spend your most time around. And what he's explaining to you is your environment does impact you. Bruce Lipton, I believe, and the biology believe that he is explaining that, you know, obviously, one, we do affect the external. So everything as, as, as above, so below, as within, so without, there is a connection internally and externally. Although we do work for the internal state to be balanced here, we do need to realize the external state does also affect us. So again, I'm the person that tries to work from both ends, find that balance. Crystals are a great way for us to have it. resonators in our environment that can help to nullify some of the more distorted or distracting frequencies um, as we look to kind of ascend and rise our energy levels and be more conscious with our intention with using certain things to achieve or manifest certain goals. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. And you can find physics on this if you even have a wristwatch. There's quartz in those things because whenever you strike or squeeze a crystal, it creates what's called piezoelectricity, which is a measurable energy release effect. So it might be such a small amount of energy. It's not like it's lighting up in your hands or something. Although I wouldn't be surprised if like a powerful Qigong practitioner couldn't light up a crystal because I think that it could happen. That piezoelectric squeeze that you can create with, you know, like a little pocket stone you carry around, a uh, hematite is great for that because it's very grounding and takes care of a, a lot of uh, built up negative energy, you know, because you, you know, you're made of molecules. You can have an abundance of electrons, I guess, if electrons are real. I assume they are because based on all the other science that seems to work using electrons as a model, <laughs> can't really see them. It's, it's interesting that negative component of energy is completely uh, ethereal and almost non-physical. And so it makes total sense that a, a metaphysical means would help with clearing that or, or balancing that. So tell us about some specific stones people can get into their life that you like a lot. All right, great question. And hematite, great pickup. Hematite, from what I've come to study, is because it is an eye, it has a lot of iron in it. It's actually very helpful for things like the circulatory system with our blood. So, it is interesting how these different stones do have different correspondences. But the number one stone that I recommend, there you go, brother. And I can even see the other ones you got on your wrist. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> yeah, roll crystal heavy. I like that. Um, yeah, sorry to interject there. For listeners, I just held up a, a hematite bracelet. I've been slinging a lot of bracelets with crystal, made of crystals lately because I feel like it's a great way to get it in contact with your skin. But to jump back in with you there, hematite specifically, great for circulation. If you have cold, chronically cold fingers and toes, it might help you out with that, things of that nature. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, you know, great pickup. So my interesting story with hematite, it's the only stone that literally broke in my hand when I was meditating on top of a mountain. So it was literally the first time ever doing a certain experience. I bought a hematite ankh necklace. First time ever doing that. Sitting, meditating, held it in my hand and it literally crumbled apart while I was holding it. I'm like, okay, interesting. <laughs> uh, but you asked me before about some stones that I would recommend. And for me, some of the most potent stones that came into my life, number one was Moldavite. Now, um, firstly, I want to start by saying that the, the first law of thermodynamics is energy is conserved. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So when we apply this to ourselves, obviously on a deeper scale, we understand, okay, we're, we're infinite, right? But when we're looking at stones, there are certain stones that are classified as tectites. And now these are stones that literally were created after a meteor hit the earth, right? So the impact of that is, you know, it can destroy countries. It can destroy, you know, areas, right? That's the impact of a comet hitting the earth. That was actually solidified into a stone because, you know, you can imagine the flames, everything that was, that was created from that impact. That's flowing up in the air and then coming back down and cooling down after coming back down through the environment on the, the atmosphere. Um, Moldavite, that, so this stone came from this Molda region, which is near the Czech Republic, which is near uh, Russia. That stone, funnily enough, through certain researchers, they actually equate that stone to the Holy Grail. Right now, there's, a, there's an allegorical story that has to go with it because, you know, everything is metaphorical. But there are stories of even the chalice that, you know, had eternal, uh, the, the, the wine or whatever you would drink to have eternal youth actually was a Moldavite chalice. 
um, you know, again, this is what Robert Simmons believes. But from my own personal experience, because, you know, there's a lot of people that can say a lot of things. There are a few things in my life that when I heard about the first time, I knew that there was going to be something for me, but I knew it wasn't the time at, at that moment. Ayahuasca was the first one. And the second one was Moldavai. So I was told by um, my ex-boss, you know, I was asking about a few different things, astral projection, I'm interested in this, I'm interested in that. And he just said, Moldavite. Moldavite's one for you. As soon as he said that, it triggered something. I'm like, okay, cool. Not yet, but I think that's pretty cool. I started working there. And I'll give you a little bit of a story if that's cool. About a week before I didn't realize I was ready to buy my Moldavite piece, he came to me and he's like, hey, bro, this is going to be strange, but I had a dream of you last night. And in my dream, you came up to me and you asked me for this particular stone. It was a Lemurian seed quartz piece, right? This one was actually quite rare because it came from the Himalayans. So I'm like, hey, man, yo, like, you know, with what we study, you know, with what we're interested in, it's like there's nothing that's too weird or too crazy. It's like, okay, cool. Thank you for that, bro. Appreciate that. Held onto this necklace. And then, you know, after that, I kind of, you know, I guess the intention that was with that stone kind of like allowing me to be like, okay, maybe I'm open to this whole Moldavite thing, right? So I go into the little section we had Moldavite and, you know, this is one thing for anybody that's interested in crystals. Go with your gut because your mind wants something, but your, your gut or your intuition or whatever you want to call it will tell you or your feeling, right? So again, you don't have to believe me or not, but while I'm going through this section of Moldavai, this ring falls into my hand. As soon as it hit my hand, I felt heat. Now, this is my line of thinking. I don't like the look of this ring. It's ugly. <laughs> so I'm just like, why this ring? It doesn't fit my finger. So it literally doesn't fit my finger. It's not a style of ring. I, I don't wear rings generally, but it's like, well, well like, why this one? You know what I mean? And I, I like, was realizing like, bro, you just felt fire with this thing. Don't be a dick. <laughs> just like, <laughs> let it be. So I'm spending like the next couple of days, you know, really thinking about it. I wanted to make sure that it was the right stone for me. And, you know, there was a one that I wanted, but it wasn't the same feeling as I had with this other ring. Picked up this ring. And after, for two weeks, I was... I was playing around with it because one finger, it was too tight. The other finger was too loose. The, the end of the story was I actually meditated one evening and I heard the message to try putting the ring onto the necklace that was given to me from my boss. And lo and behold, it fit perfectly um, over it. They connected perfectly the ring through this uh, Lemurian quartz piece. And it was my amulet it, all the way up into the start of this year where I was literally on the beach. I went for a swim, took it off, went for a swim, came back, put it back on, forgot to take it off the second time. As I remembered, I had my necklace on while I was walking to the water. I turned around to walk back out to take my necklace off. A wave hit me. Time slowed down. I saw it fall off my, my head, but you know, to the point where I felt like I could have caught it, but I, I didn't react. And yeah, I spent the next 30 minutes waiting for, to see if I could see it again. I swear I saw it in the, in the water. I went to go grab it and another wave hit me <laughs> and it was gone. So... That's my Moldavite story. To answer your question, Moldavite is definitely one stone that can assist because being a tectite and high vibrational, it will shake things up that need to be shook up in order for your resonance to raise. Now, it's not always comfortable because we need to realize that there are a lot of aspects of ourselves, and you know, I'm speaking only about myself, that still can be caught in the mundane or in the lower realms, right? The lower dimensions, the lower densities. As a moldavite is an activator, as a conduit, um, it assists you in clearing that out. And that can manifest in your external by having a lot of arguments with people that, you know, were in your circle that you kind of were cool with before. But then as you start to ascend with resonance, when your vibration is raising, you're going to have friction with anything that's of a lower frequency. Moldavite can assist in that. Um, and, you know, with any crystal, you don't own it. It chooses you. And then when it's done, it's gone. And, you know, we could try to hold on to them, but yeah, like, you know, look at my experience. I've had a lot of different experiences with stones. When they want to go, they're going to go on to the next one. So hopefully whoever that, has that amulet now, they're enjoying it. I think I only answered with one stone, but Moldavite is definitely a great one to start off with if you're interested in getting into crystals. That's a really good one to go in depth on as we did. I've never thought about Moldavite or Tektites in context of the second law of thermodynamics, but that is a totally sensible notion that there's definitely energy held by that crazy impact that forged it. Around my chest, I typically have a Moldavite with a titanium angel aura quartz uh, over the top of it wrapped in silver. Wow. A previous guest of the show, nice. Jazz, who uh, does jazz raps, look him up on Instagram, J-A-Z raps. He uh, did this piece for me by commission, but what how it came to me was as a gift. I was checking out 
crystals at a, a, a vendor at a music festival and this is when I first discovered Moldavite. I was just pretty early in my journey with crystals and I thought, wow, this would be a really awesome stone to have. I felt very drawn to it uh, in general right then. And uh, later that day, a friend gifted me this, it, both of the stones that I'm wearing in this wrap and I wound up getting them wrapped by a friend and wow. yeah, I've, I've carried it pretty regularly ever since. And I find it's almost like whenever I feel very stuck not like I feel stuck, but like stubborn against uh, changing certain things about my behavior or my perspective that are getting in the way of my advancement. I will find that I am inclined to not wear it. Like I'll just leave it on the shelf and then I'll start wearing it again. And then uh, I'll start getting down to business a little better. Get, things do shake up with it. It's a, it's a crazy powerful ally to have on your side and definitely – one of the more rare and precious of all crystals, in my opinion, as far yeah. as how they will come and go whenever it's your time or their time. That I always like to think we don't move the crystals around. They move us around. <laughs> and I had a personal experience. I may have shared this on the show a long time ago, but I'll try to condense the story down. The, the very first real crystal activator in my life was selenite which is a big, clear, very light transmitting, amazing, unique type of stone of more common than Moldavite though. You can find selenite very cheaply and easily. And I do recommend that you get some. And I was yeah. at, again, a music festival and I got this selenite wand. Actually how that happened was also, how I even got it was a bit of a cool story. I asked the woman, hey, show me the stuff that you don't have on the table that's behind the counter. And I've never before or since ever asked a salesperson or a vendor to show me what they're not selling. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. She happened to have this box of selenite crystal wands that a guy from states away, I think in Colorado, contacted her anonymous, not anonymously, but out of the blue online and said, hey, I have these wands. I'm feeling like they should go to you and I would like to sell them to you for your store. And she said, I don't have the funds to pay for them, but they are beautiful and thank you for offering. And then he just sent them to her anyway and said, I, I know they'll get to where they're supposed to go. I just know they're supposed to go to you. So one of these wound up with me uh, synchronistically out of just asking that question that I would never normally ask. And selenite, I started feeling my internal energy by playing with selenite way more, especially when combined with practices like Qigong, which I'd love to touch on maybe later, uh, and how that dynamic works and what internal energy, how that, how, how it works to be aware of it, like what you can do to improve that sensory perception. But having this selenite wand for a year and working with it a lot, uh, learning a lot, I came back to the same festival a year later and decided – that I had finished with it and that I should pass it on to somebody. This idea was just like clearly in my mind strongly. And I wound up meeting a person who was, who was vibing with this crystal when I showed it to them and uh, to the point where they were laying on the ground uh, and they like, this is a music festival, right? So people do all kinds of crazy stuff. I just let this guy hold the wand. And the next thing yeah. I know, I look over and he's laying on the ground totally naked with the crystal on his chest and just like absorbing the energy from the earth and grounding oh, super hard. Gross. And he's having like a really great, meaningful experience. Nothing perverse about him being naked. Yeah. But I had to be like, dude, I get what's happening Anything. right now, but you got to put your clothes on because someone else might not get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <that's> anyway, <laughs> at that point, I was like, yeah, this is the guy that should have this crystal. So I gave yeah. it to him. And this is a festival of what definitely 30,000 people or more very large okay. event and later that night a friend comes up to me and goes hey so i met this interesting fellow and he had a crystal that reminded me of yours and when he was showing it to me we dropped it and a piece broke off and he gave it to me and i wanted to, to bring it to you and i was like well did this guy have a giant crazy alex gray art tattoo all over his back and she's like yeah that's the guy and i was like this is my crystal you just brought it back to me so somewhere else, she had met this guy that very night and then a piece of it returned to me. And anyway, I've used that piece in other – shards of that piece in other wands as like a, like a – just for magical purposes because it connects me back to that amazing experience. And wow. anyway, that's just one synchronicity I could tell you about selenite, let alone other crystals. And 
Yeah. It's, it's true. You just start paying attention and start playing around. And before you know it, weird, but in a cool way, stuff for sure happens. Yeah. Well, I just like to make a little side tangent and think like a lot of what the crystals are made out of, like if we think about our technology right now, right, we use a lot of silica to transmit information, a lot of uh, electricity. And, you know, as you mentioned with um, with watches, you know, with quartz, what quartz is? Quartz was also used as an amplifier in a lot of old radio stations, right? Because we understand it's a conduit for energy. So it's when we transcend the thinking of, oh, it's just a rock. It's like, well, hold on. What we're staring at, we're looking through our computers right now. That wasn't a rock, right? That was mined out to be formed and fashioned through the, the technological process. Selenite and Moldavite are actually 12 of the synergy stones, which I'm not too sure if you're aware of. You probably are. But they all are very high vibrational stones. Selenite is an amazing stone. It's a very abundant stone. It's, I think its mineral name is gypsum if I'm correct. And in terms of what that does, you know, what you were doing with it, and you, you, you're obviously very aware of this, but, you know, in a lot of occult practices, selenite is the amplifying stone. So you would use like a wand of selenite and you would put other stones on it because what it does is actually amplifies the energy of that moving forward. And I can see you've got a big brick of the selenite. Yeah, there. Check, check this out. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, bro, that's like a lightsaber. It has a flashlight built into the handle as well. So it does light up at night, but... Yeah, that's my uh, podcasting supercharge wand. <laughs> you don't even have to wow. do anything with it, but have it around. One thing I've noted, I learned recently something you can do with selenite that's completely amazing is if you have the imaginary capacity to do this, next time you're doing yoga or just stretching or qigong or even meditating and you have a selenite in the room with you, imagine, visualize the negative energy or what you're trying to release out of your body, tension, stress, anything flowing out of you and like as wavy energy lines going through the air and absorbing into that crystal. And you, I feel a shift when I start doing that. It's like sometimes when you're trying to stretch and you're releasing something really tight, you're like, release, damn it. But you don't really know how to let go. It's just that's your baseline. So you, it doesn't feel like you're not letting go. But whenever you create that imaginary conduit to something that's powerful, like selenite, you can actually... It can be like the th that could be how you decide to let go. It's it's almost like the, the age old question. Well, if the placebo effect is real, how do we make that work for us on purpose instead of having to trick ourselves? It's through the imagination, first of all. Exactly. Yeah. The first law of the uh, the first hermetic principle is mentalism, right? The universe is mental. So that's where the placebo effect comes in. Your reality is creating your reality, God. Like <laughs> you just got to expand that and see what works and what doesn't work. And yo, if anything, the universe is going to keep like giving us little love taps until we like, okay, well, that wasn't working. That wasn't working. That wasn't working. Okay, cool. So we only learn. And truth is just simply realizing our own ignorance, um, being humble to that because it's okay to not know something, but it's not okay to be told what is the truth and then kind of try to, you know, for whatever reason, be egoic and, and try not to embrace that, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I love that, bro. And honestly, that lightsaber of yours is amazing. <laughs> yeah, if what we know constitutes like a sphere within our being, then the more that we know, the, white, the bigger the circumference and perimeter of what we don't know becomes. So we got to accept that. And the most powerful words you can say, magically speaking, is I was wrong because – Magic yes. is when you change your consciousness with your will. And if you have the will to recognize that you were wrong and accept it so that you can move forward, then you've magically shifted your own consciousness. But if you're stubborn against that, then you're blocking your own magical creative ability. One thing that I caught in your videos that was great was about citrine and pyrite and how they relate to creativity. Uh, could you talk about how creative energy and sexual energy and the sacral and will chakras work together uh, as, as yeah. forming the sort of active aspect or the yang aspect of self? Yeah, yeah. Great question. And I, I want to just preface this by saying I by no means am where I want to be in terms of this. This is constantly a process that I'm learning, but simply through me explaining my perspective, it helps me understand this more. So there are certain stones associated with certain chakras. Now, everyone's most likely familiar with the old seven base system. Um, with what I'm working with now, human design, it's actually working more from a nine base system, but we can get into that later. But when we were talking about stones that correspond, when we study certain things like metaphysics, especially Chance and I connected through the university, through secret energy, um, we see that the universal language or scope of things is, you know, a sound equals a shape, which equals a color, which equals a scent, which equals, you know, 
blah, 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 right? The, the seven languages. And there is a connection. And we can see that if this is connected to that, then that has an organic truth to it, right? So there's an integrity. And because of that, we know to resonate with it. Whereas if we, you know, use a common sense, you know, you don't need to be a master of metaphysics to know certain principles. When we look at the reality and be like, well, why is this happening this way? None of it makes sense, right? But we'll relate it back to the internal. So we use all of this to firstly realize that, you know, one of the maxims is as above, so below, as within, so without. So firstly, we need to realize how do we operate this internal machine of ours, the vehicle, the macabre, um, that's going to affect that which is around us simply through our own toroidal field or an aura, because that's going to be a filter for how people are going to come in and perceive us. And again, on a side tangent, human design actually will break down even further how your specific aura is, because there are actually four different types from what I've come to learn. But stones are important because, again, this is not just for me what I've had to come to the understanding of very quickly. And, you know, just generally by my my life path, my pattern is like I take what works and I use it while it works. And then if it doesn't work later on, if I find something better, I, I transcend. And crystals came into my life so ominously. So if you don't mind, I'm going to quickly just explain, like, if you guys have read the book, The Alchemist, Paulo Coelho, where I'm sitting right now, I moved in yesterday. Right. When I traveled, so I went to Thailand to spend time to study the university deeper. This would have been four years ago now. At the same time, I was staying in Chiang Mai and the intention was to go and visit Montauk Chia and actually work with the Taoist multi-orgasmic man principles. Right. That didn't happen. But, you know, what I did experience from that was what I needed. And when I came back to Australia, Sydney was calling me. And if you, you may not know this, but I'm not a big city person. <laughs> I, the last place I lived in Australia was literally one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, like Cable Beach in Broome on the West Coast. I've been to Japan to play rugby and they took sand from the West Coast of Australia to Japan just because that's how beautiful the sand is. So I'm in paradise, but Sydney's calling me. So I'm you know, I followed my omens. Um, you know, the first few months were interesting, but when I came to this area that I'm living in again now, I was walking down after viewing this place and I just had so many synchronicities hit me where I actually was, it was an out of body experience that I can still to this day in, embody. Like I'm feeling the goosebumps as I'm saying this to you. I walk into a cafe bookstore, never seen one of these like before, found the alchemist again after giving it to a girl that I spent a few weeks with in Thailand. I said, you need this book. Here I am finding it a few days later. Right? So I'm like, Omen, continue on. As I'm walking down, I noticed that there's so much live music. Right now, I'm currently studying audio engineering. So, you know, that was, I guess, a little seed that was planted at that point, which, you know, again, very grateful for. But the most prevalent thing that happened that night was I actually walked into a crystal store. And when I stopped there, I looked at it. I'm, I'm looking at the book, The Alchemist. And without giving too many spoilers, there's a point where the, the main character, you know, works in a crystal store. Walking into the crystal store, I actually had an experience with not thinking, but knowing I will work here. Lo and behold, three months later, I'm working. Now, why is this a good segue? Because I didn't speak to the owner about working there. I didn't say anything at the time. What I did was I bought the biggest chunk of citrine I could find and put it in my pocket after buying it and then walking out. So, you know, that is, I guess... I guess we were talking about well, what I was talking about was just this element of how different things work and how different omens and synchronicities can kind of guide you, right? But when we're looking to embody that into our own being, you know, you mentioned pyrite and citrine, which two stones I have strong affinities for. So great, great questions. Citrine is a stone um, that is associated with the solar plexus, as is pyrite, and they work on different from different ways. Now, when we look at the solar plexus and the sacral, because you know you're looking at third, second and third chakras. So the second is all about sexuality. And in our way of thinking, how we've been programmed to think about sexuality, a lot of it is the actual physical act of sex. But, you know, as we know that there are different layers to everything, sexuality is conversation. Highest forms of tantra is literally sharing space. What we're doing right now and sharing this energy, that's a tantric exchange, as you know. Um, when you're creating a business, you know, you're actually setting an intention for something that you want to create as a service to assist people. All these things, artwork, music is sex, right? It's you're birthing something that wasn't here and you're, you're making it manifest, right? So this is what we would consider to be sexual, um, you know, creations, right? Now, the way that these stones work, so citrine I can speak on because it's actually, I have an affinity for it. I'm a Sagittarian. And again, these are labels, you're the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. But being someone of a fire nature in the Western train of thought, in the Eastern train of thought, I'm a metal element. 
So, you know, I'm all about the, you know, that's where the, probably the pirate comes in, who knows, but with the citrine element, what it does is it helps to evoke the circulation of the energies that generally get stuck in the lower centers, you know, in the gunads and assist in bringing that up. Right. And the solar plexus, actually, when we look at the body, there, there's the largest joining of um, neural synapses. Oh, well, maybe not neural, but there's a lot of like connections right around the guts, the bowels. Right. That's the solar plexus. And that's why, you know, we've all used terms like, oh, you know, somebody doesn't have the guts to do this. Or had a gut feeling, right? It's because we knew this. We know that the body is the brain, but some of us are just maybe don't give it as much attention as what it needs. The way we can use things like citrine, because what citrine does is it brings in this optimism. It brings in this positivity. It brings in this, I don't want to say reckless abandon, but it allows you to actually go off some of these ideas that you had previously. There you go. What a beautiful stone. That's amazing. But it allows us to kind of, because we don't sometimes realize how much we hold ourselves back. Right? You might have like this epiphany for this idea and then shortly after it's followed by like a, a voice. It's like, nah, you can't do that because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this. And like we've all been there and it's always something that, you know, we, we work to continuously let go of. And as you keep on doing it, it becomes a lot more easier and you actually get more positivity coming through. But this can assist in that initial phase. And, you know, it's all about this adventurous spirit because another thing that we have to learn is like it's not always a straight ride up. <laughs> like the whole of life is this wave, right? And you have to go down to the depths of hell to be able to rise to the tops of heaven. But again, when we realize that this is the cycles, we then try to work to be in balance, right? Because if you've had a really low, low, then had the corresponding high, high, that I would prefer to be on an even keel for most of the time than, you know, riding those massive waves, even though, you know, this is probably going on a different tangent. But to bring it back into the whole aspect of creation, citrine is the element or does assist you in that process in, you know, allowing yourself to be adventurous, to, to work for prosperity, but also to, you know, to essentially, and this is where you have to come in with your own consciousness and your own programming intent to then to look to ways to create things that can bring about prosperity, which is the big key word that I get with citrine. Pyrite on the other end is a metal ore, is an iron ore. Pyrite is also known as fool's gold. Venus, literally the, the mountains in Venus are made out of pyrite. Now, pyrite is very strongly linked with the lower three chakras, being you know a very dense, strong element. When we talk about the masculine, there's a lot of ways that it's 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 explained. The way that I like to explain it is it's a linear movement. It's a straight line, right? And it's funny that I mentioned that, you know, pyrite's found on Venus because Venus is actually the, the planet that we associate with the feminine, right? Which is the wave, right? So pyrite, if you can imagine, pyrite is the cup, whereas the feminine, which would be the masculine, and then the feminine would be the water. So how I feel personally that pyrite helps us because pyrite's one of the only stones I had a dream of that I had to go and buy. You know, that's why I have a strong affinity for the stone. Um, it assists you in actually keeping the intention, right? When we talk about meditation, when we talk about all these different things, part of what I feel like I'm learning from these practices is actually how to hold an intention, hold a, a fo focus, because it's through that focus that something will be able to manifest. Because if I'm like thinking about this for 10 seconds and I think about this girl and then I think about this for 10 seconds and I think about this dog and it's like it's not going to manifest, right? Because there's no... Yeah, it's sporadic. Energy flows where attention is directed. Just to throw that in. I mean, that was one of the first metaphysical principles I ever learned, and it was hugely transformative. That's why meditation is important, and uh, single-pointedness is helpful no matter how many, many things are coming at you at once. Uh, multitasking is just probably not the greatest way to uh, achieve things generally speaking as it turns out for humans yeah <laughs> oh yeah bro the truth <laughs> it took me a while to learn that but seven boma one of our mentors actually said this a great way I, if you think of everything as a download like you know if you're downloading something on the internet as you mentioned single point focus is having the full bandwidth in that one moment whereas if i try to download 20 things at once you know, it's going to take a very long time right <laughs> whereas if i just say focus okay i'm going to download this one movie right now bam it'll happen a lot quicker and that's essentially what I believe how pyrite works, right? It assists you in actually holding that resonance. Now, again, it, I, I want to mention anybody listening to this, just don't expect the stones to do everything for you, right? They have their own toroidal field. You actually have to give your intention to it and continuously give that to make that perpetual cycle happen. But they most 
definitely can be massive tools in the in the space of holding your resonance. So you can set your intention. This is what is what I want. I'm going to spend every morning meditating, visualizing, and then actually doing the work to get there. But these stones will help hold you there. So, you know, after about a month of doing this constant ritual, because a ritual and a routine, as you know, are the same thing. But doing that over and over and over again, you hit that perpetual cycle where it's starting to spin on its own, right? Like a gyroscope. After a certain point, it just spins on its own. It's self-perpetuating. That's when these stones become even more potent because, you know, you might feel like you have a down day, but just by being in certain environments, you'll feel that life again. And, you know, you can get this through stones. You can get these conversations with great friends. You can get this by going to events and meeting other like-minded souls, music festivals. (laughs) There's crystals in our body, too. Uh, Water is a crystal. Uh, So whenever you're meditating with stones or working with stones in ritual or with energy healing or Reiki, if you do spend enough time with a particular stone and you really get a handle on how it feels, what it's for, and especially how it feels inside your body, because that's the indicator that the bioenergy is flowing and not blocked, then you'd actually don't even need the stone with you anymore to use that superpower. I found out like I can make myself feel like I've got selenite in my hand without any around because I've worked Uh with that stone so much. And I I think maybe even a lot of longtime crystal practitioners might have figured that out or maybe some haven't necessarily made that realization because it's all part of you anyway. And what's all that you're really doing is reconnecting the link that's been severed with that part or aspect of yourself and your energy, right? So once you got it spinning, like you said, it's a perpetual motion machine. It's you've integrated that and you can. So like, I don't mean to hoard crystals, but I, they just come to me like in huge amounts and I don't mm-hmm. tend to buy very many. So mm-hmm. I think another thing to throw in, if you're interested in crystals, don't imagine that you got to spend like all your life savings getting every crystal on the list. Just start with one at a time. The more, like you said, with the download thing, the same can apply with crystals. If you're working with or surrounding yourself with a whole bunch of conflicting things, it, it could possibly not get you the one single direction you're trying to move in fast enough. Uh, Depending on, see, it's okay to have a lot of crystals around, but if you're not giving them that focused attention and intention, they're not doing anything for you unless you've built a relationship with that stone already, in which case you're kind of like, quantumly entangled with it in a way yeah dude that was you hit the nail on the head i couldn't agree more could not agree more this is why i'm so glad we have this convo man like (laughs) i've been wanting to talk about this type of stuff on the show for ages because it's hugely important in my life but it's not necessarily a part of everyone's life that's creative and that's why i wanted to bring up citrine and pyrite because they can really help with our one thing that i really like is for creativity stones is uh calligraphy stone have you heard of that i don't know if you can see it super well my camera is not going to focus very well but these it's a type of jasper that has like a darker brown uh swirly lines on it that almost look like writing and i find it to be an extremely great creative enhancement type of stone Uh, and tiger's eye we're in the same realm here as we've been in with pyrite and citrine with lower chakra stones I think that tiger's eye or tiger's iron, which is tiger's eye with a lot of iron in it, is really especially great for balance. It gives you that balanced willpower in a way where not only are you improving your focus on what you want, but hopefully helping to assist with making sure the thing that you're focused on is something that's actually good for you to want. Yeah. Oh, couldn't agree more. Something just popped up that I'd like to share because what I've, and this is relating to me specifically right now. We also, and and I know you're doing this right now, using stones in your own sanctuary is massive because we're talking about resonators a lot. You know, mentioning tiger's iron is a great one. A lot of these stones are very powerful for creative spaces. But just for those of us that are, you know, becoming more and more sensitive to the energies around us, selenite you've already spoken about, which is an amazing one to keep around the room. Like, you know, I'm talking specifically about your room around your house, depending on your living situation or even your working environments. I would definitely look at stones like selenite, look at stones like hematite, and also look at stones like black tourmaline. Now, guys, as we open up and realize there's so many energies around us, these stones are really, really powerful in us, you know, solidifying our environments so that, you know, not too many other distorted energies can come into that and affect this as much as well. I don't know where this popped up, but literally like it 
the picture of it popped up in my head and I thought I would mention that because, you know, Tiger's iron is tiger eye with hematite, which actually gives it the other element. It's a beautiful red color too when you see it. But a lot of these stones do really help us set like our boundaries, if you want to say. If you can imagine like you're drawing lines with these crystals and it's like, okay, now this is my space. And, you know, depending on the space and depending on what it is that you're looking to achieve, for instance, okay, this is going to be my workplace. Like I can see you with your studio set up. It's awesome. It's like, you know, you could put certain stones in that space and like, this is my creative space. I need this space here to be able to articulate what it is that I'm here to, you know, these conversations and to allow this creative flow to happen. But then when I'm in my room, when I'm sleeping, I want to be protected. Or it's like, I want to at least allow my astral body to have the, the, the resonance that it needs so that there's not other frequencies coming through in certain times. Yeah, let's just say for that am- amethyst and labradite, just to throw that out there, people, if you're taking notes on on what to use for what. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. And, you know, it, it's not to be like, you know, I don't know if that came off of the book, like, fearful or anything like that. It's just like when we realize that all of this is, if, if we mentioned the double slit experiment earlier and the placebo effect, just realizing that the more energy that you have around you, that maybe not having the same focus as you can take away from the bandwidth that we we're talking about before. So this is just coming into that consciousness of like, okay, well, look, if I've got these goals and, you know, these are the spaces I'm going to be occupying the most, then, you know, it's just only common sense to then want to try and Im- implement what you can in these spaces to maximize the output. And that's where I'm moving more into now right now, because like for myself, you know, my nature, who I am, it's like, I try to squeeze everything out of life. Like, you know, if I'm going to be here for an hour, like, bro, like let's get everything done in an hour. Like, you know, if it doesn't happen, sweet, but it's like, I'll try to do as much as I can. And that's kind of like what I try to help people with. Like firstly, starting with the mystery of self, you know, my story, and then using all these other tools because, you know, we've all come into the same knowledge in different ways. Like for me, literally like crystals was nothing, that's something I, I resonated with, but like it wasn't on my radar until I literally had the book, The Alchemist, bang, 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 all these omens, all these synchronicities, and I'm standing in front of a crystal stone, like, maybe I got to go this way. Bang, bang, bing, bang, boom. I'm working there two months later. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, cool. And from that, I was able to learn certain things. And here you are from the other side of the world. We connected two years ago, haven't really had a full interview. We haven't had a full conversation. And you're resonating everything back to me from your perspective. And it's just like... Parallel paths, man. You already know, brother. <laughs> I even have a synchronicity with The Alchemist, that book, which I do think anyone should read Paulo Coelho. I think is how you'd say his last name. Look it up. It's not a long read, super worth it. I don't remember how I first heard about this book, but the day that I decided I wanted to read it, I wound up at a friend's house who, when I was out of town and I had heard that I, from someone else that I should read this book. And I wound up at this other friend's house who I was going to stay with that night. And that book was just sitting out. And I said, Oh, hey, I've been looking for this book. How cool. And she said, oh, you can have it. I finished it. And the person who gave it to me said, just pass it on to the next person who needs it when you finished it. And she had just finished it. And I had just heard about it. I asked for it. And then after I read it, I passed it on to someone else who had just heard about it and just encountered me holding the copy of the book in a similar way. It was like a chain synchronicity. That book is crazy. Oh, wow. That book led me to Seven Boma. Literally, I cried reading it never happened before in my life. Right. And then again, we talked about the placebo effect. After that, I had in my mind, the priest, Melchizedek, I want someone like that to come into my life because I'm, you know, as a kid, I saw things, right. I saw the spirit world and because I came from a religious programming, I got so frightened of what I saw that I turned off the eye. Right. And so coming through the life. So, you know, my life has been very interesting. I've been traveling a lot. Um, you know, I've lived in two different countries. I'm Australian and Fijian. And I'm blessed to have seen both of my countries and live in both of my countries. But, you know, growing up first, so born in Australia, but growing up, my first memories of life in Fiji and just having this organic culture, growing up around your family, you know, we were quote unquote wealthy in a, in a, in a quote unquote poor world. But we saw what people perceived as value, which is the culture, the community coming then to Australia and being quote unquote poor in a quote unquote wealthy world, but everybody had so much and yet was so unhappy. So, you know, I followed all these paths and seeing all the juxtapositions and all these things. And, you know, seeing what I saw as a kid, I knew there was something more. It's like, ah, you guys are telling me half of this shit because like, you know, it's like, oh, by the way, it's like, you know, I know in Fiji, they tell you this is what's important to do. And then over here, you're telling me there's something else. It's like, you know, I, I get it. Right. There's different things for different people based on what you've seen. And I've seen enough to know that there are more the options than what you're giving to me, right? I'm not a genius, but it's like, that's what I came to know at a young age. And after reading The Alchemist, because I believe it was Will Smith that wrote a book 
oh, he, he was on a video and there was all these other like um, celebrities talking about it. I, I bought it. Within a few hours, finished it. That was the first book I'd read in years, right? Crying, you know, dude, never happens. That never happened. And then that started this initial quest of being like, you know, what was, what is happening? And, you know, seeing a lot of people, hearing a lot of people, but not resonating with them fully. It's like, I understand what you're saying, but there's something I don't resonate with. And then lo and behold, on this laptop that I'm looking at you through the book, The Code to the Matrix by Seven Bowman, just happened to download. To this day, I don't know how it downloaded, but it was on my laptop and uh, that started the university. <laughs> you guys should check out Secret Energy that I mentioned in the intro, which is Seven Bomar's website. Really great material there. Lots for free. And yes. if you want to get extremely serious and spend some time dedicated to the uh, metaphysical studies, there's the university there, which I checked out the first semester of and got a lot of benefit out of. And sounds like you have also been... A student there. One thing that I'm sure you would learn at Secret Energy or you could study, you could look up there for good ideas if you uh, are intrigued after what we're about to talk about here is cleansing, energetic cleansing, astral hygiene, how that relates to crystals but also to our bodies. In our last 10 minutes of the free show, I think of all the really important areas that I could take this, because we've been talking about crystals, I think cleansing and that type of ritual should be what we finish the free show on because it is some of the most useful and important information that is altogether not obvious until you make the connection of how it helps your life to be in flow with staying grounded and cleansed. And anyway, I, I got a lot of great tips from you and uh, reinforcement of what I already knew by checking out your videos on this. And everyone can check out your videos on this. But what would you say here and now as some uh, techniques for that and why it's important? Great question. Great segue too, brother. I just want to say that out. Really, really nice. Um, so we talked about resonance before and we talked about vibration. Now, really quickly, when you understand that you, like we call organs, organs for a reason. We oscillate sound. But the thing is, imagine if you have an instrument that's not tuned properly. That's essentially what your body is. You were given this car, but you don't know you're in the car. Most of us don't know we're in the car. And two, even those that do, we don't know how to drive it. Or we don't know how to fix it if something breaks down. Now, if you've had a car for 20, I'm 27 in two weeks, right? If you've had a car for 27 years, but never changed the oil, never done this, blah, 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 you're going to have some issues with it. And the thing is, if we think about just nutrition, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to throw shade on anybody's eating patterns, whether you eat meat, whether you don't eat meat, whatever it is. It's like, if you can imagine, if you have a petrol car and you put diesel in it, it's not going to work. The only difference with our body is the most genius machine ever created in this realm. Like what our body does on a second to second basis is insane. But we, you know, a lot of us externalize technology to be the, the, the everything that is. It's like we have a living technology that not only we inhibit, inhabit, but we live on that is, you know, the apex of what we could potentially want to create or co-create. Now, when we just come into that simple understanding that, okay, look, we've been op occupying vehicles that aren't running as smoothly as possible. And what we can do is we can actually go through the process of cleaning out the individual parts. And as we clean them up, there's actually a very beautiful video by the avatar, uh, the cartoon version of the avatar with Aang, where he's sitting and meditating with the, this yogi monk in one of the mountains. And the monk is explaining how there's all these different water ponds, but each of them have a block. And he's like, oh, in order for you to open up this water to there, you got to, you know, unblock this from there, you know, to open up the chains and connecting. If I can find the actual um, video, I'll, I'll link it to you. But Please it's do. Actual... I love that cartoon. And that sounds oh, okay. great. That's a great metaphor. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I definitely will. I definitely will. But it's a visual representation of us understanding that our organs are connected. And this actually ties back into what I learned and what we learned in the university. Our organs are connected to chakra points. And then more so than that, they're all interconnected to each other, right? So we need to work in symphony. Think about these words, our organs, the organ, the, the actual musical instrument. In order to work in symphony, we actually need to go through the process of tuning the organs cleaning the organs and it has to be a systematical process um, and guys I'm, I'm by no means an authority i've definitely done my own process I've, I've lost 48 kilos over three years i was 130 kilos at one point and my lowest was 78 kilos at the start of the year but i, I say this in saying that there's much more work for me to be doing 
But the more we come into the understanding of really what the foods do to us, first and foremost, how degenerative the food, the water, the areas, and that's not to kind of make everyone freak out and hold your breath forever. It's like, no, it's like, it is what it is. We need to know we constantly need to be cleaning the body. And that actually is one of the highest forms of self-love. And the more that we actually do that, the more that we can actually feel. And that's what you were talking about with the Qigong when we're talking about these crystals. You know, it's one thing to have a crystal in the courts and just like have a pretty thing standing in your room. But when your body is starting to pick up energy, and I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying this, and you hold on to some of these stones and you feel it, then the mind can't, can't you know, that's when the mind has to take a step back and be like, okay, there's something here that's unexplainable based on my current paradigm. And then that's when you go into the feeling. <laughs> And that's what we do by cleaning the body. We feel again because we're so numb. We're so, uh, we're so depleted of base nutrients. And, you know, and it's not to say that, you know, and it's not to blame anything about that. It's just like, we just need to come into the awareness of this is the world that we live in right now. And that's okay. The world that we're building is this beautiful future that is here for all of us, right? It's here right now. But in order for us to experience it, you know, heaven and hell are happening right now in this very present moment. And for us to choose what we want to experience, we'll actually need us to actually cleanse out the, the, the filters. Because essentially what these organs are, they're filters. And if you're stuck, if your root chakra is, you know, which is all about scarcity, which is all about fear, which is all about lack thereof, if that is unbalanced and very distorted, because, you know, food's one element to it, then you, you know, the, this, the rabbit hole goes deep when you talk about programming and how it affects your different chakra points. But when you realize just, you know, you take response from me like, okay, this is my level of fucked up because <laughs> we've all got them in different stages and that, that's all good. That's the beauty of this. But when I learn to unlock my own, you know, chakra points, that then gives me the ability to assist you. And I'm not here to say that I've done this, I've done that. It's just like what I've had to experience if some, like I tell people what not to do because <laughs> I'm the dude that dives in head first. And, like, ah, and it's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. And it's like, okay, you, if you're interested in this, this is what I did. I would not recommend for you to do that. But then for, on, the vice, on the flip side, if it took me eight years to finally learn this one thing and then this one thing is helping me a lot, so like, okay, cool. Like, dude, let me give it to you. Because if you learn this now, and this is the thing about these beautiful young soul, and you know, it doesn't matter about age, but I'm meeting so many people right now that are so much more younger than me. And it's like, look, if I give you everything that worked for me, knowing that it might not work for you, but if it does, the same for you as what it did for me. When you get to my age, I can't even imagine where you're going to be at. You know what I mean? And that's why this, you know, it actually brings tears to my eyes. When I think about the kids that are coming through right now, you know, these, these masters, these masters that are coming back and we can, you know, bridge the gap in like, this is what we have here in this world that you need to know. So you can, you know, be able to balance it both out, take what you need to go to the next stage. We're building these amazing things, but we first need to understand it has to come from us first. We need to be in resonance. We need to work to cleanse the body because when we do these things at the start, it becomes, it's very difficult. It's very taxing, but then it becomes a reward based system. When you cut out meats and you cut out dairy and you cut out this and this, and hey, like, you know, I'm not perfect. There are times where I've gone and eaten certain things just out of convenience because of what was going on in my life. Look, you know, I'll be keep it 100% real with you. But in saying that, when I've gone through the process of cleansing, I feel it, right? And because some of us don't feel the things because we've eaten them so much, that's when you have the reference point. Because someone can say, oh, you shouldn't eat meat. And someone's like, oh, well, I need my protein. It's like, Okay, kill the animal. See how you feel. If you've, if you've never experienced that, have the respect to do that. So then that's, again, a level of awareness you didn't have before to give you another perspective to make that choice. Okay, try not eating meat for two months, then eat meat. How did you feel? Again, another layer of perception is like, oh, okay, I didn't realize this before because I've only eaten meat my whole life. I don't know what it's like to not eat it and then eat it again from a fresh lens. Clean your body. See what it's like to have a clean colon and then eat meat. You'll have constipation, you have diarrhea, you'll have this, you'll have that. Again, that's when the mind, because all the things we're told from, you know, mass media, ah, well, this is what I'm told, but this is what I'm feeling. That's the truth. And, you know, the more we come into the truth with the body, by cleaning it out, giving ourselves a blank slate to experience everything from a different perspective, that's really where most of the changes for me really happened. Yeah, it's just like filters in your house. If you haven't cleaned it, then whatever it caught is still there. Your organs are filters like that. And then what they filter is energy and consciousness is energy. 
or energy as consciousness, you could say. So having blockages in various parts of your body is literally affecting how much consciousness you can have, which is another way of saying how aware you are of yourself and the external world. One thing that's hard to be aware of is the astral, metaphysical, etheric energy body that we all have. And a lot of movement practices can help us connect with that. Crystal work can help us connect with that. But when it comes to cleansing, even probably before the internal organ cleansing even takes place, it would be wise to have a regimen of energetic cleansing because Mm -hmm. your astral body does get actually cleansed by taking a shower to an extent because water itself is a cleansing agent energetically. But there's more to it than that. And your water holds on to vibrations and frequencies. You're made of water. And so things like burning sage, grounding bare feet to the ground, and consciously choosing to release negative charge that you may have accumulated, especially when working with other people. If you're someone that is attempting to work with other people in an assistant way, using crystals, using Reiki, using energy healing, I think it would be very irresponsible of us to have this long conversation about crystals without mentioning that it is it impacts your health to take on other people's vibration because you are accumulation of people that you're around. If you're not balancing that out and releasing the parts of it that doesn't serve, you can give it all back to the earth metaphorically and literally, and that is where it can be transmuted. But it's something that you got to have a conscious ritual of doing for it to be happening. It could be a quick, short little grounding ritual you do whenever you remember, oh, I haven't done it for a long time. Or it could be a more elaborate practice. But either way, it's like you said, cleansing is the ultimate form of, is one of the highest forms of self-love. So giving yourself an energetic cleanup is just as important as taking a physical shower. That's something you, you get into good techniques for how to do that in your videos with crystals. Uh, and I will recommend people get to your YouTube channel to check that out. So uh, as we're wrapping up the free show here, why don't you tell everyone where they can find your YouTube channel and remind them of your website and how you'd like to connect if anyone wants to find out more about what you do. Thank you. And um, I know this is the free show. We will stick into your conversation, but I do want to express gratitude for this opportunity chance. Like, honestly, I know it's been two years in the making. I'm very, very happy that we did finally connect on this level for myself, guys. So my YouTube channel, Journey with Josefa, um, I will provide um, chance with a link there that will have, you know, essentially a lot of the different things that I do. And the essence on my platform is essentially what I mentioned before. I'm the dude that likes to dive in headfirst to what I truly am passionate about. And the way that my life has been, I've been very blessed to have people, mentors, teachings come my way. So this is me going through the process of, you know, not being a guru, not being higher than you. It's just like, look, if I can give you what I know now, that's helped me um, and show you the practical steps because I'm a doer. I need to do things. I don't like to talk about things. I need to do things. Um, That's what my intention is in sharing there. So I have a playlist that's been working a lot around crystals. You can check that out too. It's the one, the crystals 101, everything you need to know about crystals. Um, but now what I'm more transferring into is helping people understand themselves. Um, so my, my website is journeywithjosepha.com. Uh, through there, you can book me for consultations where I offer um, full refunds if you're not interested or if you didn't feel like you were receiving the value for what you, uh, what you paid for, but also two podcast opportunities to have more opportunities to connect like this. That's something that I'm always open to do. But um, if I could just quickly mention what human design is, because this was actually gifted to me by another mentor in my life. And surprisingly enough, two years ago is when it first was introduced or planted into my subconscious, only for it to really come full circle um, this year. Human design is a system that synthesizes the I Ching, the Jewish Kabbalah, the high levels of astrology, as well as us now understanding what neutrinos are, which is the most abundant form of energy known in the universe. Now, what this system does is it helps you understand based off the number nine, so not the seven energy centers, we now have a nine-based energy being, that it will synthesize yourself from a conscious and subconscious element and give you a picture of who you are. The way that I work is not to tell you this is you. This is to say, this is based off the math, the energy present at the time, the the makeup, the blueprint of who you are as a being. And you can very quickly either resonate or 
call bullshit on what I say because it is what it is. It's black and white. You either believe or you either resonate or it doesn't. And you know, the people I've been working with, there's a strong form of resonation. But what this does is gives you a system. And again, don't become dogmatic about systems. For me, this has just been the most powerful for me to understand myself. This assists you in understanding one, how your aura operates. You know, we were talking about energetic principles, all these different things. When you know how your aura individually works, because there's four different types, you then know how to do some of these ritual works. What's the best way for you to ground your own energy. You know who to be around and which people in your environment generally resonate different energies. So if you are interested in doing any sessions with me, that is something that I assist and provide for. A lot of my videos on human design are on my uh, YouTube website, which you can kind of get a feel for, see if you resonate. But if not, you know, I'm always happy to connect, just make friends with people. Um, it's all about opening up this collective conversation because we are living in the, the time of revelation, right? This is the moment where we choose where we want to go. And just by simply having this humane conversation, heart to heart, telling you everything I believe that I feel in this love, and comes back to what you said at the start of the, the show, you know, really coming into this present moment and sharing this space and feeling this because I'm feeling this right now. You know, if I can do that with anybody that watches this, it doesn't matter what time and what space, we get there. And it's we. It's not me. It's we. And that's what it's all about. The journey together. There's no, <laughs> there's no higher or lower. You're where you need to be. But there are certain people that can share what they've shared um, because then there's going to be a point where the person that helped you is going to need your help. That's just how it works. And that's what we're here to do, yo. <laughs> yes. Uh, step into that flow of reciprocity that is all around us. Man, we're going to have a lot to talk about in the Plus Extension. Thanks for coming on. Like you said, uh, this is really awesome to be making happen. I've also been looking forward to it for a long time. I've enjoyed the things that you've been putting out since we've been acquainted and could always tell that we would have we would have made a great podcast. We should do one. And here it is. Like, that was a powerful transmission, flew by. Well, I guess we'll see you guys on the other side, members yes. and everyone else. Thanks for checking it out and make sure and go show Josepha some love on the internets. Yes, please. done guys another episode finished and gone well almost gone you still have me for a few minutes here i'm really happy you checked out the show and i'm sure josepha is happy to connect with you as well so if you want to show him some love why not get on his youtube his facebook go leave him a comment somewhere subscribe follow like stuff he's doing and that ought to give him the indicators that you're on board with his information maybe even resonating with it, like the crystals themselves. Really, Josepha talked a lot about the idea of crystals as resonators and why they're powerful to have in your personal sanctuary or living space. And I like that idea because it's one that I practice. The external world you inhabit is a projection of your psyche. And in that sense, your home is very close to your core. Literally, it is a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts and patterns. Therefore, putting crystals that resonate with a certain energy has a magical effect on your mind by symbolizing that type of energy potential in your unconscious, which is another way of saying just by having it around and knowing what it means to you, your mind is automatically going to be more prone to helping you experience the benefits of that stone because it's constantly being reminded of your intention by its proximity. That's pretty much how sigil magic works. works. That's how mind control works in the negative sense. So... Put some positive resonators in your environment. And if you want to even go the extra mile, you can use crystals to even program the water in your body with intentional ritual. But of course, you can use them to charge, program, cleanse, and structure water before you drink too. Great tool for that is shungite, and it's good for energetic shielding in general. Structuring water, that's something you can learn about a lot at secretenergy.com. That is a website Josepha and I met through. I like that website a lot. You can find all kinds of great information from people there and 
The founder, Seven Bomar, has a wealth of podcasts and interviews all over the all over the place that have got pretty much all kinds of spiritual information. Uh, we also talked about letting go of crystals a little bit, but as in like not getting overloaded by them and really gifting them is a hugely awesome thing to do because it's a good way to learn about how letting go of what you love brings it back to you in a new form, which is kind of like what I was talking about in that story of the crystal that I gave to a guy at a music festival and then a shard of it came back to me. If you love something, let it go. It's not going anywhere if it's true. And another way that uh, letting go of a stone led me to a huge synchronicity and unlock some of my personal energy and awareness was I had a little piece of picture jasper that a friend gave to me many years ago. It was one of the first stones I ever was given before I really started collecting or they started collecting towards me, whatever the case may be. And this little piece of picture jasper, I was carrying it when I went to a sweat lodge, which I've only done one time, but it was with some Native Americans, elders, and in the sweat lodge, they had a really cool clay pipe that was like thousands of years old. Someone had dug out of the ground on their property, and it was something that had been used in ritual by a tribe in the area way, way, way back in the day. And so they said that this pipe had some kind of a spirit attached to it that was helpful and liked to join the rituals that they did in a um, beneficial way. So I thought, well, oh, what the heck? Why don't I put this uh, stone that I'm carrying on top of the pipe during the sweat lodge and see if I can collect some of that spirit into the stone? And I felt like I did. I was really happy with that, that pocket stone. I carried it all the time. It seemed like it was a good luck deal. But then again, at a music festival, surprise, surprise, I ran into, not even ran into, I just was walking past somebody in the throngs of thousands of people I walked past this woman and uh, young woman, and my intuition just started flaring up. Hey, you got to give this stone, this little piece of picture Jasper, to this woman. And I was really taken aback by that because I didn't want to give it away. It was one of my favorite little pieces of treasure, but I did what the voice in- inside told me. And then in response, she told me, I don't know why you're giving me this, but I feel like I need to tell you something. I think I need to tell you about Qigong. And I'd never even heard of Qigong. If you've been listening to the show, you know I talk about it all the time. Now, that's how I learned about Qigong, is giving up this crystal to a random stranger. She told me to go check out Qigong, so I did. Wound up getting really interested, taught myself some things, and next thing you know, it's a big major part of my life and a big major part of my ability to sense my own body and energy and overcome a lot of my problems as a person, so... You just never know what giving something away to somebody might lead to. You're not necessarily losing, as it turns out. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me. If you really want more, though, and you didn't get to hear the plus extension, why don't you get on there? Patreon.com forward slash interverse. You're doubling your pleasure, doubling your fun, doubling your conversation with Josepha today, and unlocking a big archive of extended episodes from the past. Only in the plus extension, you will hear many more mechanics and methods of grounding and balancing our energy, both for our bodies and crystals. We talked about upgrading your routine into an empowering ritual, which is really interesting. Routine is ritual, but just in a mundane sense. We talked about the human design system more and fleshed it out in depth and looked at a chart that was sort of a a diagram explaining the correlations between systems and human design which I've linked in the show notes. We also talked about strategies for connecting to the divine within other people in any situation, whether or not they're being difficult or pleasant. More in-depth information and encouragement about successfully doing a colon cleanse, which is some of the best information you could take in if you have the intention to try it. I wish you all the best, and I would say I wish you luck, but I know you don't need luck. It's, it's good fortune that you're even considering doing it. It's the people who never clean their organs that are kind of in a bad luck situation they're going to be out of luck eventually one of my favorite quotes from the episode was when josepha said cleansing the body and organs is one of the highest forms of self-love i totally agree while i'm not perfect with it i haven't done that many cleanses in my life but i've only even been turned on to this information for a few years so bear with me i'll get clean (laughs) one thing i just got clean on was coffee i probably 
a year and a half ago claimed on the show that I was going to quit coffee. And that didn't really happen right away. Uh, but instead of quitting coffee, what I've done is backed off to zero to one cups a day instead of like three, four, five cups in a day. Still drinking a lot of tea, still feeling like that's a crutch. But anyway, that's just one particular way I'm trying to cleanse my body. Just as an example that I'm definitely not perfect. I'm only talking about this stuff to help all of us, including myself, because I need to know this stuff too and I need to be doing it. More things we talked about in the plus extension though. We talked about how trauma is retained in the body in its water and muscular tension and what can be done to release it. And severing our ties to the corporate death machine by purging toxins and parasites. And at the end, we talked about hyperdimensional warfare and some of our shared personal experiences with intoxicated people who get possessed like Agent Smith taking over someone's body in the Matrix. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. All of that can be yours at patreon.com forward slash interverse where you can become a plus member, support your favorite show. There are no ads on this podcast. There is no way to get any financial support for what I'm doing here other than you guys becoming plus members. Just keep that in mind. If you're listening to the free show, basically I'm working for you for free and I'm happy to do it. And But there is a whole second hour and it's awesome and I love it and I want more people to hear it. So that's why I'm yammering on about why you should do the plus membership thing. Anyway, there's not a lot left to say. I do apologize for the length of time between episodes. It is tricky to schedule these things. <laughs> I'm promise I'm working on it and trying to get help even. So you guys are the best. Love you for listening. Love you anyway, but I really love you for listening. Don't forget Josepha online, journeywithjosepha.com. And thank you, brother, for coming on and asking me to do a show because A, it's really helpful when someone comes to me and asks to be on the show because it does, cuts out half of the work for me. And B, I've been wanting to talk to you for as long as I've been aware of you anyway because you've always put out some great information through your social media pages and much love man thanks a lot much love to everybody all you out there and much love to mount analog mount analog on soundcloud you can find that linked in the show notes that is the music i used for this episode in the background in between segments so go check him out show him some love too Love everybody. Love everything all the time. It's good for you. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to mosey on out of here and get on with my life. But there will be more Interverse very soon. Thanks for sticking with me and see you next time. Peace. I'm <laughs> sorry.